Hi, everybody. What's up? All right, Joel just got online, so just give me a second. everybody uh Sarl just got online hold on one second hi everybody so if you haven't made it into the event stage if you're in the discord go ahead and do that if you find just listening on here that's fine as well how's everyone i'm i'm waiting on joel to find his way into the uh stage channel <laughs> so okay i guess i can undo this now and I'm pretty sure y'all can hear me in Discord now as well. So hi, is it, how's everyone? This song, this song's a good song. Still waiting on him to find the channel that we'll be in. Ooh, ooh. Ah, <laughs> oh, DJ Knight. Yes. Ooh. Oh, you've been subbed before. Uh, that's two months. Nice. Awake at 9.30 on a Sunday morning. I'm surviving. Early morning vibes, right? I, I have to be at work at 6 a.m. every morning. I know your feeling. All right, Joel, you do know where to go, right? Ugh. You're still muted in Discord. Oh, oh, wait, am I? Oh, no, I'm not. Okay, we're still, I'm still waiting on Cyril to find his way in here. I told him where to go. Like I do every time. I'm just waiting for him to find his way here. He is online. So. And once again, Swash won't be joining us because he just couldn't get out of work. And. So. Thank you, Mike. I still haven't found him yet. So my Rexon, thank you so much for the follow. I don't know why my, um, oh, because it's hidden. Now I'm probably gonna keep it hidden for today, but thank you. Yeah, no, he actually was scheduled to be off in time, but stuff happens, right? So. Seven thirty. Come on, Joel. Or I'm I'm just blind as a bat and I can't he's not there right now. So 
on. Hey. Alright. Alright, I'm about to have everybody start pinging him. Hello. Hi, there he goes. Okay, there he is, everyone. <laughs> Alright. I made it. Sorry, I was like... Oh, I was about, I was about to have everybody flood ping you. Can you hear me? So, yes, I can hear you. <laughs> All right. Event. Or... Hang on, I'm just having trouble hearing everyone else for some reason. They, oh no, they. You can only with this type of channel, you can only hear me. Yeah. Oh, just my headphones aren't working, but I can hear you through my speakers. Technical difficulties over here. It might be your Discord settings. Ah, it's all good. All right. So, how's everybody going? You doing well? Yes, I'm doing fine. Everybody seems excited. Let's do this. What have we got? Right. 19 right. audience? Hello, 19. everybody. <laughs> yeah. Can I read them out? Uh, you want me to read yours out? All right. Let's see. Oh, yeah, the questions. So, we've got cell questions, women questions. Cool. I saw that beard picture. That was funny. Um, <laughs> I actually grew a beard over. Um, covid and all that recently and it looked exactly like that too except my beard has multicolored it has like blonde and brown and red in it so it looks weird <laughs> i'll do it again maybe i should do it again for the tour yep. all right oh if it gets hot in here let me turn this off Ooh. okay so if you let's dive straight into the questions and the first one let me make sure i'm at the top let me do the donator one first because i think we had one from the donation section which is from darky and he's like sir how do you feel when you know mtc got so many into googling hentai yeah let me just catch up to these questions what date is it uh today july 19 yeah uh july 30th is that where the questions start where you're reading from yeah july 30th I, uh, what's your all-time favorite production from Belvedere? What was that again? <laughs> okay, here we go. What is... No, it's going to start... Well, I think the Moonu was probably for you, but Bikio. Where it says, uh, when do you want to play Osu and what was the first Sorrel song? Like, okay. Cannot see that. It's July 30, 2022? Yes. And it says Candy Skull, what's your favorite all time production? And then. Oh, for Searle. Oh, I was looking in donator questions because we have one donator question. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah. Yep. All right, let's go there. Yeah, the do first donator question, and it's the only one from Darky. It says, How do you feel when you know MTC got so many people Googling hentai? Um, it was funny when I made MTC, I just figured everybody already knew what hentai is because, like, hentai was. Um very established by the time i got to mtc but i guess yeah it wasn't as mainstream as it probably was for me it was just a common thing for me like i knew about hentai uh not long after i found out what anime was like in the 90s so yeah um but that is cool that is cool like <laughs> i'm like indirectly you know become part of that whole thing and that's funny that makes me think uh i'm more that, that's why MTC got so popular, I guess, because it was a way, it was a gateway for people to discover hentai, which is funny. Huh, I never thought of it like that. That's cool. Thank you for that question. You opened my mind a bit. I forgot if I had okay. my mind. <laughs> which uh, question do you want me to ask you? From July 30th as well? Yeah, July 30th. Oh, so Munu, yep. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, Swash and Luna questions. Is that right? What VSC plugins do you use? <laughs> I don't. I think. I think yeah, I think. I think that was meant for you. <laughs> um, 
mostly uh, the stock plugins for Reason, like um, Digital Sampler and Maelstrom and stuff like that. But I also use a bit of Silenth and some 8-bit plugins as well. Uh, most of the time, it doesn't really matter what VST you use. It's just what you're trying to get out of it more than anything. That's what I find. Like, I'm never... I never think of a sound and then instantly think what plugin I want to use. I usually just think of a sound and then try to make it out of the first plugin I see. Unless it's a specific sound. But generally, yeah, stock reason plugins or... I guess sometimes silence. Oh, and uh, what's that other one? I think it's... um. Not massive, but the other one. Uh, it is. Let me just check. It would be... Serum. Serum. I've used that a tiny bit lately, just for bass, though. All right. Let me find your actual question. Uh, since when have you started playing OSU? That's for Swash. Okay. What was your first cell song you ever listened to? I think this is... I live for the bass drum. No, that's my favorite. My first one was Pretty Rave Girl, and that was like 15, 16 years ago on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's pretty standard for most people. Pretty Rave Girl. Yeah, that was the very first one. I think it was not too long after it came out I first heard it, so. And what type of milk do you prefer while we're on the subject? Chocolate. Chocolate milk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate's pretty delicious. Have you had egg milk? No, uh, I haven't. I mean, we have eggnog here, but I never had egg milk. Uh, I don't think it's got egg in it, does it? I don't know. But yeah, it's pretty delicious. There's like a, a brand of milk over here just called eggnog. Well, there used to be, and it's so delicious. But I don't think it tastes anything like American real eggnog. Yeah, Anyway, no. off topic. Okay. <laughs> so... Candy Skull is, says, what is your favorite production and much love from Belgium? And also, Swash wants me to tell you that he loves you. Thanks, Swash. Where is he? He's at work. Ah, he? oh, yeah. He could, He was actually supposed to leave earlier, but stuff happened and he, he's now stuck. So, Man, he, what time is it for him? Uh, he's an hour behind me, so it's 6.30 in the afternoon. Hi, right, working pretty late. Yeah. Oh, tell him I said hi and... I miss him. <laughs> All right, I'll let him know. Uh, favorite production um, of my stuff. Um, well, like I always say, it's usually like the most recent one that I'm currently working on. Because I'm always, I've if I'm if I've learned something new, then I'm guaranteed to think less of all my old productions where I didn't know that. <laughs> so. The track I'm currently working on, I think, is like my best technical production so far. Uh, but yeah, you just won't hear that un for another couple of months. But I do have my next track ready to go for the first time ever. Uh, usually I'm right up until the last minute producing a track and trying to get it ready for the release, but this time I've actually got the next track ready to go. So I'll, s I'll put a clip of that in the, in the chat soon for everybody to hear. Oh. And the next question for you is... Favorite kind of cheese by Chaotic Evil. Oh, I'm surprised it's not Mary asking that. Um, it's American cheese. American? American. Yeah, I do like American <laughs> cheese. It's pretty delicious. Good standard. Good taste. All right. I, I'm going to say Lon. I'm going to call him Lonnie because I have a hard time reading that name. He's like, do you have a my anime list account? If not, would you want to create one? Kind regards from Poland. Anime list count. Um, I don't think I would really need it to be honest because I don't get to watch it that much anymore. I do have friends though who recommend animes all the time. I got recommended uh, Demon Slayer. This shows you how far behind I am. I got recommended Demon Slayer and a whole bunch of other ones, just like Netflix ones so far though, because they're easy. But my friend does have um, Crunchyroll and all that kind of thing, so I do get to like sit through animes every so often. I can't live without Crunchyroll. All right, let's see. So, uh, Niazi wants to know, or says, hi, Cyril. Here's a question that I don't know if it's already been answered or not. What is your favorite singer slash artist you have collabed with? Oh, 
I don't know. That's that's hard to say. It's like, who's your favorite kid? Making you I pick like favorites. The... <laughs> what was that? Just making you pick favorites. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't know. They they all they all have their own like uh, pluses and minuses in everything. I guess it's just like everything in the world. Uh, it's it's always been easy to collab with uh, Leader because he handles all his own stuff and writes his own lyrics and does everything like that really well. And his style really suits my um, music, I think. And because we've never met, and I don't think we've even actually even spoken or anything, but we seem to our just way of working works really well. Uh, and saying that, working with GPF was really fun too. Um, all my singers are always good to work with. They're all so easy. Uh, like Crystal Rave Girl is super easy to work with. Um, Ella. Who else is it? Uh, Chi Chi is always really good to work with. Yeah. It's hard to say. But they're all fun. And it's always like a new experience with each new person. Because there's always like a different way of doing things. And in the end, I think it just comes down to the track itself like yeah i can make a bad track with a good singer and a good track with a bad singer over all, all right. right what's your question when did you discover so i think you've already answered that yes i have it as a teenager years ago do you like cuddles head pats or belly rubs head pats or all of the above. <laughs> Head pats. Head pats. Head pats. Okay, I'll keep keep a note of that. I'll take hugs too, but depends on the situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mister Happy says, "Hey, Mister, how old, how did you begin as a DJ? Was it hard? How did you do it?" Uh, it was actually kind of easy because I fell into it. I started producing first, obviously, and I had a whole bunch of tracks, and I didn't know how to play them. I just enjoyed making the music. So uh, when one of my tracks got signed, which was Transformers, back in 2005, and it was released in 2006, um, I kind of just ended up with a gig to play live because the promoters assumed if I had a track signed that I was a DJ as well. So I had a gig, and I basically... I was already kind of practicing learning how to mix, but I wasn't like a pro or anything yet. So yeah, after about six to 12 months of practice, I uh, jump up on the decks. And it was pretty hard because it was right at the time where CDJs were coming in and vinyls were getting phased out. And I had my whole set practiced and prepared with CDJs, expecting them to have CDJs at the venue. But then I got there and they only had vinyl, which I had practice with but I was nowhere near as good with and I wasn't like prepared for. So I had a whole bunch of uh, vinyls in a box. I just had to like randomly make a set on the fly, which still turned out pretty good in retrospect. Like it wasn't too bad, but yeah, it was hard. But then from then on, it was, it was super easy because that first set was the daunting one. And then after that, it was just like, well, after that, I actually got to use CDJs. So it was pretty, it was pretty smooth. I wouldn't recommend doing it like that. But yeah, production's the key. If you if you got your all your own music, then it's pretty easy to learn how to mix it. Especially today, because uh, you can make your own edits and you know use sync and whatever else you need to to get off the off the line. And I've even been to uh, shows where small producers, you know, or DJs with no following at all, had a full pre-recorded set, and that was their set. So they literally just had to stand there and you know amp up the crowd. And DJing yeah. wasn't even a part of it. And no one noticed. No one even cared. Like, the promoter was standing there. He knew what was going on. And the crowd probably didn't know, but also probably didn't care. It's just one of those things. They're just there to have a good time. Yeah, that's right. So. All right. Uh, okay, what's your next one? Hi, Swash and Luna. This question is for you both. What game have you enjoyed the most that is underrated and you have... Made the Swash and Luna play it. I've made the Swash and Luna play it. <laughs> so, it's no secret that my favorite game is Destiny 2. I've been on a break from it, but... I play uh, a Destiny. crap ton of Destiny 2. Swash has been sort of getting back into it lately, but... Yeah. Destiny? 
Yeah, Destiny. Well, Destiny 2 now, because Destiny 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old and We can't play it on PC, but, yeah. Destiny, you can't play it on PC. You can't play Destiny 1 on PC, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I used Destiny to play 2. Destiny 1 when it first came out. It was so fun. I still miss it. There's a lot of things about the first Destiny I miss, but they're, they're improving the second one. Especially after yeah. kicking out Activision. There's definitely a lot of bugs, but I, I think the pros outweigh the cons for that game, especially for PvP. That was my favorite bit. I haven't done PvP in Destiny in so long. I'm going to be terrible when I finally get it's back into it. probably <laughs> uh, full of sweaty... You know, tryhards. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so, yeah, it's full of tryhards, and then they put an anti cheat in there, and then now they already figured out how to break the anti cheat. So, anti cheat? What, how do they cheat? So, it's like you basically how you can see people cheat in Call of Duty and all that stuff. It's that how, same how way. So, what, just hacking? Hacking, yeah, selling cheats. Like, um, we got actually me and some people actually mass recorded a dude streaming while he was cheating. Like, what, like just, just had like. Auto like aim. overpowered mods or yeah, like auto lock or something like that. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. They could be sitting. You could he like they could kill you through a wall type stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. I guess that's the advantage of playing on PC because you can do that. Yeah, can you do that you sort of thing on console? Not really, no. But PC, you can. You but that's harder. that's really frowned upon, though. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'd assume that. Yeah. There's so many games that do that too. I think it's just a part of it. And then you see the pros who enjoy playing the cheats because they can still be the cheats. That's pretty yeah. satisfying. Like Lucky. I think his name's Lucky. I don't know. But. Ooh. Okay. I'll give you a last question. Henlo, Swash, and Luna. I was thinking it would be fun to have a system where at the end of each presents or each year, we vote on what song we like the most. What are your thoughts? I mean, honestly, I think that would be a cool idea. Swash is not here, so I can't give his input. But we like to do like a That's little. Pretty poll. good idea. It's like you I mean so best song of the year. Yeah. So not not best song ever because that's just kind yeah, of. Yeah, just best song produced in said year. Yeah, that's a good idea, and that'll give me some direction too. Great idea. Put a pin in it. Right. Oh, there's also someone who asked me about the uh, since me and Swash and Eric, I might be going to the uh, little rave in Baltimore and. September, someone wanted oh, yeah. to do a meet and greet. Um, I personally don't mind that idea. Swash hasn't given his input yet, but then again, he's so last minute about everything. He probably won't do anything to say anything till the time of the rave. So, but honestly, personally, I'm good for that idea. Whoever asked me and who, if they're watching, so Just yeah, that'd be awesome. Your ears peeled about that. All right. So for your question. TSM, oh, I like that gaming team. Lig, uh, Lingam wants to know, will you ever do a show in Europe? Europe? Uh, yeah, I've done shows in Europe, and I would love to come back one day. When I start doing, you know, international touring, uh, Europe will definitely be on the list. Uh, where, though? I could not tell you. Although I have had interest from places like... Um... I don't know, uh, well, like, Norway again, I had interest from, but not for the Rust stuff. Uh, somewhere else, like, I think it was um, somewhere in the Nordic region, and then uh, Germany, of course, still want me back, and, yeah, some places like that. It's going to come down to just, uh, like, logistics, uh, if it's, like, in range, and if it's, if I have to do, like, a big trip for a single small show, it's not going to work out, so, you know. Yeah, but it's all it's all in the air at the moment, and I think first things first, I'll have to get back to live shows just locally. And for but for now, I want to focus on the uh, VR rave we've got coming up, what we're working on. Yeah. And I think that will be super fun. And I am planning another Brisk stream probably in around October, which I haven't even spoken to him about yet, but hopefully that works out. Another Halloween. And one. then I want to start thinking about live shows again so probably i don't want to give a number but maybe like a year or two all right so bard wants to know have you ever been to guam no i've never been to guam i'm not even sure where that is to be honest it's a u.s territory it's like puerto rico almost but it's oh, okay yeah US yeah okay. US territory yeah yeah i'd be down to go there for sure all right 
Okay, Rotten Bunny wants to know. Hold on, let me mark this. Uh, how long have you been using Vocaloid program? Uh, also, love your song. It's a banger. Thank you very much. Um, I can't remember when the first Vocaloid track was that MTC two, I guess. That's the first one I sure. remember you using a Vocaloid on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the f yeah Sonica. Yeah, that was in 2014. Uh, and I think that was using Vocaloid two maybe or might have even be one but yeah it was really um i wouldn't say complicated but to get a good sound out of it was really hard like getting it to sing and like say lyrics was pretty easy but getting it to sound audible like for it for the words to sound like english was really hard and plus you had to do a lot of processing to it like you had to really compress it and eq it uh to get it sounding clear and the other thing I had to do was, um, so you'd have to get it to say one note. So you, let's say if the word was, um, you know, I love this, you'd have to go, I export, love, export, this, export, just so you can get all the syllables and vowels to sound clear. It's, it's a lot of process, but it was, it was worth it. It was like an interesting thing. But Vocaloid 3 is out now, and that's way better. And I think there might even be a new one on its way. I haven't used it in a long time. I should do another one. All right. Well, somebody's actually marking them for me to be which, so which one's on. Whoever's doing that, thank you. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Andy. Oh, uh, uh... Katusha. Oh, sorry. I keep on... I always mess up your name, and I feel so bad about that. I am so sorry. But, uh... Hey, it's P4. Where are you coming? When are you coming to the UK for tours? Okay, there we go. Uh, UK. That's always a tricky one because the UK is one of those places where if you're in the UK, it's easy. But if you're not from the UK, it's super hard. Uh, but yeah, I would love to come back to the UK for more shows. I think it would. I I probably wouldn't do traditional uh like happy hardcore uk hardcore whatever they're doing over there now shows it'd probably be more like cons because i've had a lot of interest from uk cons over but like pretty much zero interest from uk raves so yeah i'd love to come to a con over there for sure all right bkio wants to know who was your favorite person to collab with i think you might have answered that already yeah you want to go on to the next one then yeah, let's just do the next one. All right, Cubic's supposed to know, hey, Cyril, I'd like to ask you if you would do a live stream on Twitch or YouTube, for example, like music production or something. That would be cool and interesting. By the way, your music is amazing. Uh, well, that was my attempt at doing that when I did the Otaku Boy walkthrough thing. And man, that was such a hard job. I don't have the personality or the communication skills to sit there for an extended period of time and talk about stuff. Uh but, yeah, it is potentially something I could do in the future. I just have to, I don't know, get out of my shell a bit. Yeah, I get a lot it's of people hard. asking it's... that me asking me that personally. Can you ask him when he's going to stream? I'm like, I've already asked him this, and he, he's just not into it right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think I'd ever stream by myself because um, it, it feels like it would turn it into a job kind of thing and where I have to turn up on time and do things. I'm... I'm much more happy to create music at my own pace and then release it as I go. Whereas if I had to do it all the time, I'd probably burn out super fast because I see it a lot. And I used to see it a lot too. But yeah, if, if, if the right opportunity comes along and a bunch of people want to see me do a, you know, some, some kind of production tutorial, I will do it. All right. So Annihilator wants to know, what do you think is the most important thing to learning when it comes to being a DJ? That's tricky because there's so many different like perspectives. So the actual skill of DJing itself, I would say would be beat matching, like just getting the beats to match. But that's kind of like not important at all anymore because you can just get the program to do it. I think overall, the most important thing for DJing would be... Um, being able to handle a crowd and keep them interested and like read the crowd, see what they like, what they don't like. Um, like if you look at DJs 20 years ago, it was literally just 
playing music and you wouldn't have to do anything else. Whereas DJs these days, you basically, you have to be an influencer. And if you're not an influencer, then everything else, you're not going to get anywhere. No matter how good you can DJ, if you can't, you know, keep people interested, then you're not going to get gigs. So I would say today you have to be an influencer. <laughs> All right. Which is why I think I'm a bit quieter as a DJ now, because I do not want to be an influencer. All right. So, Wilt Huka wants to know, Hi, Cyril. I've been listening to your older music lately, and right now I'll dance with you as my favorite. My question is, will you ever do a song with your old style? Uh, it is hard to make a song in my old style because I don't even remember who I was back then. <laughs> and I've learned so much um, that I'm not even sure if I could. But, I, yeah, I made another track recently that I think is kind of like my old style. But I'm sure people will hear it and not think that at all. The only thing I can think to make my song sound like my old style would be to produce it poorly kind of thing. Because I'll Dance With You, for example, there's like no bass in that song. The writing is like pretty good and the melodies and all that are great. But I don't think the, the melodies and the style is that much different to what I do now. Apart from my like, like unusual tracks. But if I do a normal kind of singy song, then it's not that different apart from the production, I think. But yeah, it's one of those things I can't tell with my own music. Like if anyone has an example, we'll do a lot. We'll do a... um an open chat thing at the end, like we did last time, and you can ask me properly. That would be great, and you can enlighten me. Oh, Swash is messaging me. Oh, shoot, dude. Oh, okay. That's Swash. Yes, yeah, Swash. Swash is messaging me. Okay. Cedric Gregory. Oh, my gosh. I want to watch Harry Potter again. Hello, Cyril. So I was wondering if you have pets and which... and you're making good music, and you can... where I can bang my head on thanks for your masterpieces uh i don't have any pets uh we've got guinea pigs actually the kids wanted a pet and we said we got guinea pigs because it's kind of easy um oh guinea pigs are cute we were going we were going to get a dog but we don't have any fence so um can't have a dog yet but we're planning to move in a few years and get a like a decent sized yard so we can have a dog so okay. dog will be next but so, guinea pigs for now my curiosity question out of that, what breed of dog? What breed? Um, probably German Shepherd. That's what I grew up with. And they feel like actual dogs and not just furniture that you have to feed. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, I have one that lives with me. She's solid black. She is so beautiful. Her. Oh, German Shepherd? Yeah, she's solid black. Name, nice. Her name, and obviously enough, her name's Evie, but... <laughs> <laughs> she's my cousin's dog, though. Oh, yeah. All right. Nagisa Hazuki wants to know, hi, hi here, uh, Nagi. There will be another collaboration, will there be another collaboration with old singers like Sarah, Tamika, or even Jessica? Miss her voice in the songs, more hugs, greetings from Romania. Always your music, hype me up so much, you're the best. P.S. Favorite one ranked song. These are Go Wild, more with others. Oh, yeah, um, I actually have a song with Sarah half written, ready to go, which I think should be coming out soon, I hope. Uh, it's one of those songs that was supposed to be a collab, but um, the other person in the collab just kind of like stopped working on it. So I think I'm going to take that song and just finish it myself. Uh, Tamika, we still do stuff pretty regularly. And her daughter as well, which is Kayliana, we do stuff still. Uh, Jessica, though, I haven't spoken to her in years and years and years. I wouldn't even know how to contact her anymore. But yeah, uh, Sarah and Tamika definitely have stuff coming up. I like working with them because they're, they're like local to me and they're easy to work with. All right. Andre. And I still have to get vocals from Luna, too, just so everybody knows. <laughs> I have an idea for a track that she's going to participate in. And somebody's asking about that in another question, too. <laughs> Funny oh, enough. Yeah. So, uh, Just putting you on a uh, public stand here. I know, so. yeah. You, you like putting me on the spot. It's <laughs> all right. So, Andre wants to know can you talk about your tattoos and who inked them? I'm curious how many you have and what they all mean. And thanks for giving me music to get through all the times. So I download your music for those 100 plus days submarine deployments. Oh, they're in the military. Okay. 
submarine. So you're underwater listening to my music. That's crazy. Uh, so the tattoos don't really mean too much. The stars, when I first started raving, I noticed that stars were like a theme. Uh, but it must have just been local to my scene because I haven't seen it much outside of my Brisbane scene. And it was just basically me, you know, solidifying in time how special the rave scene was to me. So the stars just got tattooed on me. I've got four stars, two on my arms and two on my chest. And that's basically all it is. It's just like I was having the best time of my life and I wanted to damp myself so I knew... So I could always remember that and never forget it. Uh, but apart from that, I just think they look cool. That's why I got them. I don't really put much meaning behind the stupid decisions I make. <laughs> All right. Air Conditioner wants to know, which of which of your songs are you the least proud of and why? Least proud? Um, oh, there's so many. <laughs> uh, well, it'd probably just be the ones with the... The, probably the ones that I rushed out and could have been better or I wish I had to change things on. I always talk about uh, Catch It was one. It was well written and done really well, but this, I dropped the ball with the kick and bass and a few other things. I remember playing it live one time and the drop came and it was just so anticlimactic because the bass just didn't come in. Uh, that's the one that stands out to me the most. Uh but yeah, generally, generally speaking, I'm pretty happy with the track when I release it. So, and if if the track does suck, I usually just delete it, uh, and which has happened a lot of times. Which happened with "Let Go," which is that song that got leaked after I never released it. I'm sure everyone's, some people are familiar with it. <laughs> <laughs> I will be re-releasing that very soon. Actually, um, it's going to be part of a vinyl release, which will be coming very soon. And an NFT. I know Super of a certain Finnish fan NFT. of yours that will be excited to do a video edit it with that one again because her first one was so well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. So your personal reporter, who we call Blue Steps, says, Hey, Cyril. Blue Steps here. Could you tell us a bit more about the song Hands Up, Can't Bring Me Down's alternate version that you shared with the server a while ago, for example, who was the singer and why hasn't it been officially released? Thanks for your reply. P.S. Please promote yourself to your followers to vote for you and DJ Mag's top 100 DJs. That's funny that he said that. I had an idea to do something about that. I'll explain that in a sec. Um, so with Hands Up, that started off as a commission. Someone in France wanted me to... I think it was either a remix or just a like a production, they wanted me to remix those French vocals and that's how it turned out. Um, but then they never released the song or did anything with it. So I'm like, I just wanted to release it myself. So I did the alternate vocal version and released that one instead. So yeah, the French version was just a commission that never went ahead. And the DJ Mag thing, uh, I kind of don't want to be in the DJ Mag thing because it feels just more like a popularity contest than an actual competence thing because i'm not sure if you saw there was like years ago where some top 100 dj was going around to raves and clubs with ipads and just getting random people to vote and so it kind of watered down the whole thing um but if i was in there i'd be happy to you know take my place in there but i don't want to sell myself for it it doesn't really feel like my place all right i was gonna do a thing in a song actually i was gonna make a sarcastic actually did i do it oh yeah i did in that um otaki boy thing i think where did i do it i said something about vote for me in the top 100 dj pageant oh yeah is that the end of the otaki boy thing but it was fake so don't really vote <laughs> all right Evil Paragon says, Cyril, you have, consi have you considered making a duet song with multiple singers like Crystal and Luna in the same song, not as a mashup? Um, I guess I could. I don't really see the point of putting multiple vocals in a song because then they just fight with each other a bit. Like, not physically fight, but like the, the sounds of their voices will fight with each other unless they had like particularly different voices. 
Like I just did a that last song I did, Doki Doki, and the one before that, I Feel Alive. Those girls in those songs were twin sisters, and they wanted to do a collab. I mean, a duet. But having two of the exact same voice would just sound like the same person, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But uh, and I I get doing like a duet with a boy and a girl kind of makes sense, and doing a duet with two girls would kind of work, I guess. But it would have to be the right idea. Can't trying to force it wouldn't work. And plus, I've never actually heard Luna sing, so I'm not sure what would happen. And like, would it be one singer doing the main vocals and the other one doing the backup or the harmonies or just taking turns at singing sections? I guess that could work. Yeah. All right. So yeah, it's one of those things where the idea would have to be there first, and not just people wanting to sing. All right. So Mesorium, I think that's how you say the name. Says, hey, Cyril, I've been a huge fan since 2012, and I can't express how much I love your music. Would it be possible to do a collab with me one day? Uh, perhaps. Perhaps. I've been getting so many collab requests lately. Um, I'm sure a lot of people do. But, like, there's only so many I can do, and it gets to the point where I, I just don't have time to do solo work anymore, and that's where I'm at now. I've got about eight collabs in the process of finishing and all I can think about now is how I want to do uh, just solo stuff and not even vocals in it, just instrumentals. I just back to the, I feel like I'm back in 2010 or something where I'm just, I don't have singers to work with and I just want to make solo instrumentals. Um, but yeah, if, if you can, get yourself to a point as a producer where I can't deny collabing with you, then yeah, definitely do it. All right. So get yourself in the spotlight and I will collab with you for sure. All right. Marcel wants to know, Hey, Cyril, they say you never forget your first time. Okay. So sorry. I have not pre-read these questions. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. Twitch will what get was me, it? Twitch will get me for that. It, uh, it, it was it was a lewd question. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I didn't read it all. No, yeah, so yeah, Twitch will get me for that. I'm not <laughs> Okay. Hi Cyril. I was so happy to hear your favorite evolution last time, even if it wasn't Vaporeon. My question for you this time is will you ever consider making a TikTok and posting on it? Feel sad that there isn't any more cell music circulating on TikTok than just MTV Pika Girl, which Pretty Wave Girl is also circulating a lot. I don't know if they haven't heard that yet. They're great songs, but there's so much more amazing cell music out there that people can just, just people are just unaware of. I make sure to play your music at work every single day and to spread the love. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I can't say I think I've looked at TikTok once in my whole life. Um, I think it reminds me of snapchat in the way that it's super temporary and short and i do get what it is about but i'm not sure if what i would even do on there kind of thing because i don't want to get on there and dance or because I, I feel like you have to like be there full time making content for it almost it's like a thing you have to actually put effort into and if it takes away from my actual production then I don't think that's something I would be into. It's like I could either focus on music or less focus on music and do TikTok. And I, I just have no interest in TikTok at all from what I've seen. Like YouTube's fun. YouTube's cool. You get to like make full things for people to see. But yeah, TikTok is kind of just like feels like you just video yourself in between making songs. That's what it feels like to me. I could be wrong, and I could be just too old for it, which I also feel is true. But yeah, TikTok just hasn't interested me at all. Right. Oh, Jay wants to know, he says, Sir, a quick question. Do you think you will make any music with Scott Brown? Uh, I did ask Scott Brown a while back to do a collab, but I don't think he was interested at all. Uh, he... Yeah, I, I spoke to him, and... He, yeah, he just didn't really seem interested, so I didn't bother chasing it up, which was kind of sad because I uh, used to, I used to make all my music to sound like his. He was like my first, you know, 
audio inspiration kind of thing. Um, but I think there's just like, it's just the generation gap kind of thing. Cause he stopped making music right around the time I started blowing up and then he came back to make music, but yeah, I just don't think the times matched up, but yeah, if he was down for it and wanted to do it, yeah, definitely for sure. All right. So Zyke wants to know, hello, Cyril, have you ever toured in the U S if not, what prevented you? Yeah, I did most of my touring in the US from about 2000 and I think nine was my first year to 2019 or 18. So yeah, a good 10 year run. And I did like a lot of the US, even Hawaii and some other outlying places. But not North Carolina. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so Bullock wants to know, hey, Sorrel, can you still do the Brisbane stomp? Stomp. Ugh. Brisbane stomp, yeah. I still have the um, muscle memory for it, and I can still do some of, like, most of the tricks, but the fitness, the fitness is what I don't have. Because I realized looking back at the way the scene used to dance back then, it was, like, nonstop for, like, six hours straight doing extreme cardio. And... So yeah, the skill is still there, but um, actually doing it for a, more than 20 seconds is probably tough. I think that's why um, Brisbane Stomp never blew up, but the Melbourne Shuffle did blow up. Because Brisbane Stomp was like very hard work kind of thing. You had to, Your heart rate would be extreme, whereas Melbourne Shuffle, you could get away with doing it for an extended period of time without having to die of exhaustion. And that's that's the thing. But yeah, if I would love, yeah, maybe I should do it on TikTok. That'd be a good TikTok video, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry. I had crickets. I I I kind of forgot to turn off the, not delete the uh, permissions to let people type. So they're still adding questions. Okay. Saint. Saint wants to know, hi, sir. I hope you're feeling good. My question is, what is the best place to send your fan art? Just, oh, wait, no, I, sk I skipped Poison Eevee. My bad. Poison Eevee wants to know, hey, sir, what kind of art, drawn, uh, drawn art do you like? Uh, any. I like anime style. Anime is cool, of course. Um, Drawn art. I don't know. I think it just has to be interesting, nice and bright and colorful. Um... Yeah, just, it's hard to say. It's such a broad subject. Just something that looks good, I guess. Like, what kind of songs do you like? Things that sound good. <laughs> right. uh, but yeah, I'd love to see your art because um, I was actually just looking for an artist for some uh, cover art stuff. So if you have stuff that you think I would like, send it through. I'd love to see it. Hold on. I don't know how they're still typing. Um... Saint wants to know, hi, sir, I hope you're feeling good. My question is, what is the best place to send your fan art for just any fan media created for you? There you go. Um, yeah, just send it to s3rl at djcell.com. Right. Okay. Or if it's too Sorry. tricky to send it to, like, anyone who knows me, like Superman, Eric, or you guys, Luna and Swash, I'm sure they can pass it on. All right, I'll have um, to say, I don't really check on here much, but if you send it to my email, I'll definitely check it. Okay, so, Ben McBee says, Hi, Cyril. What, so what is a song that you made after you stopped touring that you most want to get the opportunity to play live? So what was that last bit that I really want to... Play live. I'll play live. Oh, let me see. It'll probably be something with like huge bass because you can't really get huge bass unless you're at a big show. So I think the best bass track I've done since stop touring maybe like did I release Sexy Vampire before I stopped touring? I'm not sure. I can't remember. I don't think so, but yeah, Sexy Vampire definitely had a good baseline. You Are Mine has a good baseline. Wanna Fight would be sweet on a big system. Uh, Won't Let You Go would be pretty good. 
Yeah, I'll say those. Oh, back of the Maccas. Back of the Maccas would be good too. All That'll right. be fun to play. Funny. Fun. All right, so Nubrific wants to know, Hey, sir, what do you think you of your hentai song years later after having a family? <laughs> Makes no difference. <laughs> the world's still the world. Um, yeah. It's like the things that kids are exposed to uh, like it comes down to the parents really doesn't it like if you're going to explain to your kids that something is bad and something is good and then they're fully aware of the situation and if they run into something like that then it's not a big deal and you don't have to freak out because they saw something you know scary or unusual I think if you educate kids then everything's fine but if you let them discover it on their own and get the, make their own little you know learn about it themselves in probably the wrong way, then that's no good. But yeah, hentai is like a harmless thing. It's just cartoons, really. So, yeah. Right. XWR no Cypher. problem. Okay. XWR Cypher wants to know, Hi, Cyril. What would have been the... What would you have on your Pokemon team if you, if you were a Regions champion? What would your signature Pokemon be on that team? I'm pretty out of loop with Pokemon, as I've shown a few times i said my favorite new pokemon was uh explode and everyone's like dude that's like generation two or three or something um but i have to say my favorite pokemon was always gyarados uh so i'd probably have a gyarados on there with a few varied moves to take on other things like i probably have to have some sort of ice move and then you know basic elemental moves uh dragonite was always good because he was kind of like an all-round character as well uh, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't tell you now because there's so many like intricate combos that you could choose. I know Wobbuffet. I think he was like super OP at one point with a certain type of rules. Um, so maybe maybe him. But I'm sure they've like nerfed and buffed a whole bunch of other things that work well. Like I'm one of those players that doesn't really choose my favorite Pokemon. I would choose the a good synergy kind of team. But it would all depend on... I'd have to brush up. I'd have to brush up so much. Alright. So, um, one of your moderators, uh, Sorrel's Isekai goddess, or we call him Boredom, says, Greetings, Sorrel. Would you do other forms of media, such as movies, animations, or commercials? Yeah, definitely. I would love to do that kind of thing. I always say my favorite kind of collabs aren't with other music artists. It's with other things. So, like... I would love to, I love working with animators or, you know, video editing kind of people. Uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. And I've actually even thought about like one day when I, I'm at a point where I don't have to release music all the time because I want to, like I like doing it. But when I get to a point where I can relax a bit, I really want to start making my own animations so I can make the visual and audio all by myself. That'd be like satisfying for me. But yeah, definitely. I would be down to put my stuff in movies and animations. I was hit up recently, actually, by some guy who's making a movie and he wanted to use my song for the trailer. But, yeah, they hadn't even started the movie or anything. It was just curiosity. But, yeah, that would be great. All right. So, from Fushi Neko. Hey, Cyril, is there an underrated game that you enjoyed that you wish other people would know about? If, what, if so, what is that game? Underrated game. I'm not sure. I haven't played too many games lately. I like playing Smash Bros, but I don't think that's underrated. And I'm really looking forward to Street Fighter 6. I'm actually going to... Yeah, well, I don't even have a PlayStation at the moment. I'm going to buy one just for that. Because uh, that looks really cool. And nostalgic for me, I guess. But the actual game itself looks really good. Especially compared to the last few. The last... Well, Street Fighter 5 was pretty bad. I bought it, but it was... I got over it within seconds. So, yeah. Um, underrated game though. Hello? Oh, it's too tough. Too tough. Oh. I'm too out of the loop. Sorry. <laughs> Alright. Spine Time says, Hello, Cyril. Sorry if this is too long. I have autism and a panic disorder. However, your music always helps me to calm down. And I must thank you for that. Your GPF 
and Rimscore are my favorite artists. I've heard rumors that Rimscore collab is in the works. Are you able to confirm or deny this? Or Yes, it is. It's happening. It's in the works right now. Uh, we're currently just waiting on a few things to happen and then it'll be going. We've already made a start and just waiting for vocals, basically. All right. And uh, they also said, also three of my favorite artists are from like Mayonnaise, so let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Rapa wants to know, hey, Cyril, my question is, What's usually the first thing you like when you get an idea for a track? Like, is it a melody, bass line, vocals, or does it vary from time to time? Also, I want to say thank you because your music always gets me hyped and motivated to draw. Cool. Uh, usually first is the overall just kind of idea. Probably, like, if it's a vocal track, it'll be the vocal tune and probably a f the hook, like the a few lyrics that you know prepare the track for everything else so it'll be like feel the melody for example when i came up with that i had the tune in my head and it was stuck there and i thought okay this must be good and then i think i put the first few lyrics down and then from there the track was finished i just had to produce it and it was done so the best ones will always have a super catchy tune and then a few lyrics but if it's an instrumental track it'll just be literally just the tune and then once the production part starts, the first thing I'll do would be probably bass line because that's the most important, I feel. And then it would be like leads and everything else. All right. I feel like I explained this a lot. I should, really should do a tutorial thing. I really should. I just, I need to stop being so worried about being on camera, I guess. Honestly, being on camera is nothing. It, if you, it, you could be worse. To, you could be like you could be worse, just like me, where you just like get so enthralled in the game, you do nothing but yell random words like butts in the mic at the, the whole entire time. And... Yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll do it. It's 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 one of those things I do want to do, but yeah, I just need to find the time. It's just uh, my kids have just gone back to school now, so I'm getting four days a week instead of three. So I'm slowly getting my time back, and I will get towards this kind of stuff. All right. So, Red Spartan says, "Hello, do you like do you listen to hyper pop? If so, have you considered doing a hyper pop style song?" Uh, I have listened to a little bit of hyper pop, like when I was working with um Dorian Electra and I was almost starting a collab with 100 Gex. I was going through a lot of that kind of stuff. And it is really cool. I I'm, I think the genre is like a mash of a few different sounds, isn't it? Like, have you listened to it much? Um, not really. If you, if you would to give me a sound and tell me that's tell me if it's hyper pop or not, I probably would recognize it, but not really. I think it's more the um, the vibe of it more than the actual sounds. Because sometimes it's like a trappy sound, sometimes it's happy hardcore, but most of the time it's the style of lyrics that kind of make it in that way mm -hmm. so yeah i don't know i'm not sure if i could pull off a hyperpot style song because i'm not you know a teenager and that seems to be mostly you know people in their early 20s who make up those kind of songs especially the themes that they sing about and stuff too all right although if i worked with a hyperpot singer or something that could definitely work all right hammer bra Plus, I know, do you like any non-electronic artists? Um, well, before I was into dance music, I listened to the Smashing Pumpkins, if anyone remembers them. They were really cool. And their main, the main singer is super smart, and he uh, has really good philosophies on like music and just life in general. He, he, that was a really good thing for me, I think. Uh, and apart from that... I don't think there's too much that I do listen to. Yeah, Smashing Pumpkins is always one of those ones that I'll have in my heart, though. Forgot to do that. All right. Sorry. Um, all right. So, Serenus wants to know, Hello, Cyril. Have you ever considered collabing with multi-genre rhythm game artists such as Reek or Camellia, especially Reek? And they're running out of ideas. <laughs> Please don't feel like you have to like make up questions just for the sake of it. Uh, like I know I'm not 
uh, full of conversational ideas, but yeah, you don't have to force it, please. Um, uh, yeah, collabing with other multi-genre rhythm games, for sure. Like, doing OSU was fun, and um, Beat Saber is awesome, too. And uh, what was that other one, that Capcom game? That was fun, but it was just that was pretty much just like a one commission off thing. But yeah, I love working with games, for sure. Like, uh, I think some of them I actually have to submit the songs myself, but like to do that, I would have to know about the game and all that kind of thing. So if anyone wants to submit stuff to games on my behalf, like just talk to me. I'm more than happy to go ahead with that. That'd be awesome. Oxe wants to know, hello, Searle, the song I'll See You Again really moved me, like, spiritually. It's such a beautiful track and lyrics. Did you really make that song after losing your wallet? Also, will you ever be going to EDC? Uh, no, it wasn't really about my wallet. That was just my sense of humor, trying to play it down a bit. Uh, it was actually my wife's idea because her mum died ages ago, and um, it was kind of my way of you know, putting a nice spin on it, saying, you know, you'll see them again uh, later on because I'm sure, you know, life is a bit of a cycle and you see the same people in your next life and all that kind of thing. Uh, and then I just did the wallet thing because it, it was stupid. More more on brand with my retarded personality. Uh, and EDC, uh, I'll, I would play at EDC if they asked me, but I'm definitely not going to try because it's one of those things where... Like, the more DJs EDC has, the better EDC looks. But the more DJs EDC has, the smaller the DJ looks. Like, if you see the lineups for EDC, it's, like, super fine print. And apart from, you know, getting the video and putting it on your Facebook or whatever, it's, uh, I don't really see the point of playing EDC. Because, like, I feel like three quarters of the crowd wouldn't know who you are. And probably, like, 1% of the crowd would be there to see you. And I'd much rather play a small show where it's like everyone is there for the same reason. Yeah. That's just how I feel about it. I feel it, like that's the difference between festivals and raves would be like the connection of all the people there. If you go to EDC, it's basically, you know, going to, I don't know, what would you say? Like a state fair. Yeah, it's, and, like, it's like EDC is one of those things where it got too big. Yeah, and it or like Burning Man even. Even though most people who go to Burning Man are probably there for the right reason, there's probably still a shit ton of people that are just there because it's Burning Man kind of thing. Yeah. And for me, I think I'd rather be have some kind of connection with the crowd rather than just have a huge crowd. Right. Especially for my style of music too. It's kind of like niche, and I'm not sure how well a hentai track would go down at it. Well, hentai would probably go down well at EDC just because shock value, but... My music in general is not mainstream. All right. And Tenen wants to know, Hello, Cyril. I'm Leonardo. I've been listening to your music for four years now, and creatively, and the crea creativity in them is incredible. They have helped me a lot in my bad days, which are many. Thank you for be creating them and having emotion in each of them. By the way, the virtual concert right. with Risk mm -hmm. was my birthday. I had a good time, although I couldn't celebrate it. Even so, I am happy. It was beautiful that day since I spent it with your music. Thank you from the bottom of your heart. Of his heart. That's so awesome. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, I really appreciate stuff like this. It really makes what I do so much more worth it. Even though I do it for myself and I probably wouldn't stop, but like knowing that it indirectly helps people in ways I never imagined is so good. It makes it makes everything much better. So thank you. Alright, Babbergobs wants to know, Hey Cyril, when is the Cyril exclusive VST coming out? Um, well, I guess when AI gets to the point where it can actually do something like that. But in saying that, my friend is working on some VSTs, not like that one, but other VSTs, and he's getting me to test and promote them. So when they come out, I will be sure to let everyone know. Some of them are pretty cool too, and stuff that I've actually wanted to use in production. So hopefully it works out. All right. Um. Okay. So, 
The Unknown Net wants to know, hey, Cyril, Unknown here. I hope you're doing fantastic. Uh, looking forward to the VR rave. My question is, do you know what time of what type of game Techno Kitty was going to be a part <laughs> part of? If so, may you tell us what you were thinking when making Techno Kitty? I w thank you. I never stop listening to listening and have an amazing day, Cyril. Oh, thank you. Um, Techno Kitty was for a game called Techno Kitten Adventure. Hey, I'm just trying to find it. I'll put it in the thing. The, the first version of the game existed, and Techno Kitty was for the sequel, and it was the sequel that never made it out. Uh, but the game was super basic. Uh, I'll put it in the general chat. Hang on a sec. General voice chat. There it goes. Yeah, the video's there. It's basically... Like a super simple one finger game for mobile where you just had to bet it's like Flappy Bird almost, I think. Yeah. It was cool, but everyone liked it because the music in it was so cool. It had a Hixie song that was awesome and I think it was exclusive to the game. And that's basically what Techno Kitty was gonna be. And I, I was really sad that they never released it. I'm not sure why they didn't. I'm guessing they just like spent all the money or something. I don't know that the techno kit, the techno kitty song. Uh, when I first heard it, I was hooked on it. I, I don't, oh I, really? It, <laughs> it, it, it had me for a bit, but all right. Mm, Eki Tech wants to know. Hey, Cyril, just out of curiosity, what plugins VST do you use for most of your music? Let me go through. Uh, it looks like so lately I've mostly been using either Serum or Samples for bass. Production, I mean, percussion is always samples. For leads, let's see. I guess this is the time I should have the video and be showing people all this stuff, my music stuff. Maybe one day. But yeah, it'll be, um, so Digital Sampler was the main one I used because of the way I create leads. It was basically sample-based kind of. So I'll, like, I'll make a lead bounce it down and then put the bounced lead into a sampler because it had a s certain kind of sound that I liked and it made it easy to manipulate. Uh, but apart from that, it would have been, so lately maybe a bit of silence for leads, but just for like wide chord leads. Um, Maelstrom and yeah, all the reason inbuilt ones. And I will say for effects though, the infected mushroom stuff for effects is like really, really good. They have good reverb and like glitchy sounds and all that kind of thing. I would definitely recommend. But yeah, I'll, I'll save all the details for a future tutorial thing. Maybe I'll do it on here one day. All right. So this is from Iceman, uh, Dorian Iceman from like your songs. He's like, hey, sir, have you ever grown... Have you ever grow a beard? It would look badass. Also, for a live performance, have you ever thought of the idea of playing your leads with a real synth? Uh, yeah, I was saying, the beard I grew actually looked not very similar to that. That's funny. That AI <laughs> thing worked well. <laughs> Face out. Um, playing live, I've never really thought about playing leads live because I didn't even know how to play keyboard to start with. Because uh, I do all my production like just with the mousing. So it's, I've never played piano or had any musical stuff. But um, I think he's asking this because we're actually planning to, hopefully if it works out, because as you know, Ice Mania is the guy who does a lot of guitars for my stuff. And I was thinking about getting him to play guitars at a live show one day. And if that works out, that would be sweet. It's something we have to look more into, but... It, yeah, that'd be it, awesome it's, for the future. He's really good because on. one time we were sitting in the general voice chat, and he, I think he played Berserk for us on the guitar. It was really cool. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. He's 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 good enough to do it live, so it would be the perfect thing. So, all right. So this question is from Cortex. He says, "Cyril, well, actually, you already answered this. He's talking about when is the BST coming? So we're gonna go to Little Billy. How much is the little how, and Little Billy? This okay? How much is the fish?" All oh, right. <laughs> I think he answered that question. I think it was like a dollar fifty or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Z 
that seems it was something like he needed fish for his studio or something like that and he asked how much was the fish and that's where the idea for the song came up yeah <laughs> that's funny okay Dadsy wants to know, hey, so I want to know if you're ever going to do a show in Brazil or Latin America. Yeah, I would love to get out to those kind of places because uh, I know I've got a really big Latin fan base, which I didn't know until recently, but that's crazy. Yeah, I would love to do it one day. All right, so Nightmare wants to know, when you use vo uh, vocoder, what is the what other effects do you put in with in production uh, so vocoder uh and then usually just some distortion and eq compression basically just the usual stuff because vocoder sound sounds really good by itself but it does need a lot of cleaning up so you usually want to clean it up and like make it crunchier and louder um and then the reason the the vocoder in reason i like it is because you can put any sound into it and it will vo vocode using that sound. So you can put like a crunchy sound, it'll make a crunchy voice. Or you can put a smooth sound, it'll make a smooth voice. You can put chords in or whatever. And that's why I like that one. So you can always, if it doesn't sound right, you can try some different sounds. And it's only limited by like what sound you put in. So you could literally put in like, you know, serum or silent and you can get like awesome sounds through it. And yeah, so it comes down to just the shaping of it, I think. All right. So this one is from Redacted. He says, hey, Sorrel, how are you feeling about your VR showcase? And if you know there will be any open decks after. That would be cool, actually. That's a good idea. Um, so I haven't, we haven't gotten too far into this. We're basically just building the stage and stuff first. And then I guess I'll do a practice run. And then we'll have to, like, plan it out. So make sure, you know, all the other DJs can play, like Brisk and Rave Girl and that. Uh... But yeah, open decks at the end, that would be a perfect way to finish it. All right. Well, I, I like this person's name. It's like, call me McLovin wants to know, are you a 100 Gex fan? Collab will be super cool. Sound, The sound I'm working on is really heavily influenced by you and them. You might be a good person to explain the difference between uh, the sounds. But yeah, uh, I spoke to 100 Gex not like a while ago. And but I think uh they just got like swept up by their touring and stuff. So I haven't heard from them in a while. Um but yeah, I would love to finish the collab we started. Alright. So uh let's see. Hi San wants to know hi. Here's my question. How do you feel when you see some fan art remix and greetings from Mexico? Hello. Um yeah, I love seeing fan art. That's my favorite thing to see. And remixes are always good. Uh, I get like heaps of submissions and I see a lot of free ones as well. It's really good. Like the reason I originally started putting out all my remix packs for free is because, well, for starters, when I first started producing, there was no remix packs, remix packs out there. If you were to remix a track you liked, it was almost impossible. And you pretty much just had to like, get someone to re-sing the vocals or, you know, just get as close as you could. So my idea was just put it out there and then one day, if people liked it, I will hear my songs in the future and that would be just an awesome thing because, like, I made a track and then, you know, 10 years in the future, somebody else has made a track using my stuff. It just feels like, I don't know, it's just a cool feeling for me. So, yeah, I love hearing them. It's great. So Deflect wants to know, hi, says, hey, from Scotland, ever managed or will uh, or be willing to play over here? Sure, I heard you had stopped playing live. Would be a shame not to see you live. You Are Mine has to be one of my all-time soul favorites, as I am mainly a hardstyle DJ fan, slash fan, hardcore, French horror, terror, so slightly different genre. Uh, Scotland, yeah, for sure uh same thing with the uk it's really hard to get into a place like that because i'm not even sure what the scene is like over there but i definitely have an entry into cons so i would yeah definitely scotland would be an awesome place to check out all right 
So, Restless XGT, how did you make that lower shifting melody and want it harder? Was it a synth or a sample? Always thought that was a great sound. Check. I have to remember what sound it is. You hear that? No, I don't. Oh, yeah, that was definitely a synth. Yeah, so I think it was just like a low. I'd have to open up the whole file and everything. Yeah, but I do remember it was. Um, I think it's like Maelstrom and Distortion over the top. And if you get the distortion right at the right place and change the frequency right at the right place, it does this cool effect. Let me let me open it up and I'll come back to it. Go to the next question. <laughs> All right. So actually, the next question is the very last question, and it's from Marcel, and they say, "Hey, Soil. So don't you mind becoming an anime protagonist? Like long bangs over your face? Okay." <laughs> I want to someone turning me into one. Yeah, that's fine. Go for it. I don't know if I would become one myself for my own haircut. All right. So that was all the questions. Thank you, guys. Should we do an open mic? I don't know. Uh, General, everybody in gin chat, you think we should do an open mic chat? Because if any of the people are there that ask these questions, I would love to, like, have yeah, them explain there. to me or if I miss something like I always do. That'd be good. Yeah, they're there. They're there. Um, let's see. Event, I have not looked in the stage at all. Okay. So yeah, I think I think they'd be down with going into a general voice chat with you. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. All right. So, if you are willing to go into a voice chat with them, then. The general voice channel is right below this one. And, yeah. Okay, hang on a sec. I'm just going through my music to see if I can find that sound that he's talking about. Which I cannot find. Oh. Ah, there it is. I'll have to find it later. <laughs> All right, let's do the general voice chat. All right. I'm going to... And so what, I just click general voice? Yeah, it'll take you down there. There you go. Hello, everybody! It's 2 a.m. in the UK, let's go. Oh, it's, it's party time, then. That's party time. Damn right. <laughs> Hello. All right. Yo, it's That's awesome here. Hell yeah.